Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm going to show you how you can draw this simple landscape in pastel step by step. This is a little bit simpler than some of my usual drawings, but I think these types of drawings work really well with pastels. I'm going to be using a combination of pastel pencils and soft pastel sticks, and I'm going to take you through the drawing process. First, I want to say a few words about the paper. Um, I'm using regular drawing paper, about 200 GSM, but uh, I covered it with some clear gesso, just a tiny amount of clear gesso. So, uh, pastels require a special type of paper that is more textured than a regular paper. Sanded papers probably work best, but if you can't find artist quality, uh, artist quality pastel papers or maybe you can't afford them for, uh, then you can just cover the regular paper with some gesso and that will create a textured sanded surface that will grip the pastel a little bit better so that's what I did here the size of the paper is about 9 times 12 inches and that's what I'm going to be working on the pastels that I'm going to be using are Kohino pastels Kohino uh, pastel pencils and Kohino soft pastels. If you have any other brand, it's fine. These work well for me. They are pretty soft and vibrant. The first thing I did here, I uh, started working out the composition by determining where the line of the horizon will be. So that's the first thing that I'm going to do. The line of the horizon, the, the line of the water here, will be about one third of the height of my paper, maybe a little bit more and uh, that's enough to start with after that I'm going to start working on the, uh, on the sky I also made some indications of some other elements in the background but the first thing that I'm gonna uh, work on is the sky I'm gonna have some trees here on the right but I'm not really going to draw them just yet because I need to draw the sky first so I just Put some indications where they will be just to just to give myself an idea where I'm going to place those trees. Now for the sky I'm going to use a lighter sky blue soft pastel as a base color and then I'm going to use some other colors on top of that. So I'm using this pastel stick, so I'm going, to uh, I'm going to cover everything thoroughly. Of course, I'm going to use my finger as a blending tool. Your fingers are your best blending tools. There's going to be a bit of residue here, but it's not horrible because uh, when you put clear gesso on paper, it grips the pastel a little bit better, so there is a little bit less residue. On regular paper there would be even more pastel dust flying around but there's there's always at least some pastel dust flying around whichever paper you're working on um, so this is like a light sky color that I got here and what I want to achieve is I, I want to create a gradient from some darker and more vibrant colors at the top to the lighter colors near the horizon. So I'm going to want my sky to be getting lighter and lighter as it approaches the horizon. So at the top here, at the top part of the sky, I used a bit more of this uh, uh, thalo blue, which is like a stronger, more uh, darker, more vibrant blue. And you can see we're getting a nice blue color, but uh, I applied a bit more of that pastel at the top of the paper so I wanted to achieve that gradient. Now I'm going to draw some clouds and if I, uh, because I want my clouds to stand out because I want to achieve a lot of contrast with the background first I'm going to clean up a little bit of that background using a pencil eraser I'm just going to remove some of that pastel now I could just use white pastel on top of that, it would still show, I would still get nice shapes. But I just want to be sure 
that the white is going to be completely white in those areas where I want the largest amount of contrast. Later I will be blending that in a little bit and creating some transitions but right now I just want to put some indications where some of the clouds will be. And notice how I'm placing the largest clouds here near the middle and I'm drawing them smaller and smaller as they approach the horizon because they're further away. So I'm starting to work with the white pastel and I'm putting the pastel over some of these areas that I already erased. Just putting some shapes that I thought uh, would look kind of like clouds. They don't have to be perfect. In fact, the, random they are, the more random they are, the better. And notice how the clouds are getting more dense and smaller as you look further away down near the horizon. Now another important step here is to dab on the lower part of the, of the cloud with a finger. And that way you can create some nice wispy effects and you can make it look like the lower part of the cloud is a little bit darker because it's uh, facing away from the light source and like the upper edge, the upper part of the cloud is more defined. You can of course refine the edges and the shapes of those clouds as you like, but I'm going to leave it like this because uh, I think it looks good enough. I'm not trying to make a super detailed drawing and these clouds already look pretty realistic to me. So I'm going to have a few large overhanging palm trees on the right. And this is, an, this is an important element when you're drawing landscapes. When you're drawing landscapes, you want to try to create a feeling of depth. You want to convey that distance to the viewer. And one of the ways to do that is to stack your elements one in front of the other so that the viewer can get a feeling like something is in front of something else. If you can do that, then you'll be able to create that feeling of depth in your drawing. So uh, for this palm tree trunk, I used a combination of a darker brown and this uh, lighter peach color. But I'm also going to use some black for the shadow areas. And also to add some texture to the tree trunk, just so that it would look a little bit more realistic. Like I said, this is not going to be a super detailed drawing, so don't, don't expect um, too much precision and too much detail uh, but what, what I hope will capture the attention of the viewer is the composition and the colors. Now uh, after I've established where the tree trunks will be I put some indications of where these large palm leaves will be and these leaves are kind of complex. Uh, I, I don't really know whether they are leaves or branches because it's like they have a whole bunch of smaller leaves on them. So whatever they are called, I'm drawing these I'm, I'm drawing the canopy of these palm trees and I'm first putting in these lines, curved lines to put the indications uh, the indications where the leaves will be and then I'm drawing the smaller leaves and the smaller details. And I think now you can see what I meant by achieving that feeling of depth in your drawing because now uh, this palm tree is obscuring a part of the background, it's uh, obscuring a part of the sky and the viewer can feel like this is in front of everything else. So that's very important because it helps to create that feeling of distance. So I pushed in that pastel a little bit using my finger and now I'm going to use a bit of even darker pastel on top of that to see how that works. I don't have too much experience with pastel pencils, so you'll, you'll often see me experimenting with colors until I get something that looks good to me. So I'm not saying that the way that I'm doing these things now is perfect, uh, but it may be helpful to some people. Then again, then again it may not be. I don't really know. Um, if not, you just, uh, I think you, you, you might learn something by uh, doing the general stuff that I always do when I draw landscapes. 
So I'm adding some black in those shadow areas. Again, this is uh, necessary because I want to increase the range of value and add more volume and depth to the object in the foreground. I also want to add a little bit more texture and make this foliage or, or this canopy look a bit more complex than it actually is right now. So I added some indications of some darker leaves and some shadow areas and already the leaves are starting to look a little bit more realistic and a bit more three-dimensional. I'm going to make it look like some of these leaves are protruding towards the viewer, like some of them are a little bit further away from the viewer while others are a little bit closer. And again, like with the whole scene, I want to create a little bit more depth. I'm also going to add some lighter colors. Uh, to some of these leaves. I'm going to create some highlights. So I'm going to try to experiment with a few pastel pencils. I, uh, pastels do layer a little bit one on top of the other but sometimes you can't really get clean lines. When you can't get clean lines then maybe you can use an eraser sometimes to help you with that. Another thing that you can do is switch to a soft pastel instead of a pastel pencil. That can also help sometimes. It's just that with soft pastel, pastels, because they're in sticks, it can be difficult to achieve the, the thinner lines and the smaller, cleaner shapes that you want to achieve. I'm going to draw another palm tree here in the background, just behind this one. Uh, the, the, just behind this larger one and I'm going to try to make its canopy look kind of asymmetrical and random um, a little bit different than the first one also adding some slightly darker greens in there blending that a bit and then adding some black for the darkest shadow areas So like I said, this is a slightly simpler landscape, something that you can do probably in under an hour, maybe even a half an hour if you're quick with pastels, if you already have some experience with pastels. But it really depends on how large the size of the paper is and how complex you want the scene to be. Uh, mine's not going to be super complex, but there are going to be some nice details and textures here. I'm reworking the appearance of the of the palm tree a little bit by adding some of these highlights. I wasn't really happy how some of them stood out, so uh, I decided to experiment a little bit with some of the lighter with some of these light uh, soft pastels. And I'm also going back in and adding some shadow areas in between those branches and in, on that um, inner part of the canopy which is all in the shadow and which is uh, hidden from the light source. Um, there is a little bit too much texture in, in that canopy so I might want to soften that a little bit. We're going to have some trees also in the background here all the way on the right uh, some rocks and some trees, maybe uh, a piece of land that is jutting out in, into the sea, in, into the sea line. Um, so I'm going to use this sponge to soften my marks here a little bit on this palm tree. I'm going to try to do something a little bit different because sometimes less in more, less is more in terms of the contrast and details. So I'm going to soften uh, this uh, palm tree and I'm going to try to use my highlights sparingly, adding just a few touches of this lighter value to a few of the larger of the larger leaves and hopefully that will create a slightly better effect. So we have one larger uh, leaf or branch, whatever it is, 
that's kind of sticking out towards the viewer and we have some of those highlights on the sides on, on those other leaves as well so I'm pretty happy with the way the trees look now I'm probably not going to be messing with them much anymore I'm going to move on to this bunch of trees all the way on the right which are behind these two palm trees I'm going to see if I can create some indications of some slightly more complex landscape in that area I'm adding a bit more shadow to the street trunk here and I blended in uh, these uh, greenish areas and now I'm going over those uh, distant trees with some black trying to create some indications of shadow areas to break up that mass of trees into some smaller shapes and to put some shadows in between them and also to add some texture to that whole thing Actually, I'm going to put a little bit more of that black at the bottom because that's where there's going to be more shadow. But think of these as distant trees which are all the way back, maybe a couple of hundred meters behind these trees in the foreground. And they are not quite as defined. We can't really make out individual canopies or individual trees. So <clears throat> all I need to do is try to create some texture and put some indications of details just to trick the eye of the viewer like we have something very detailed and complex there in the background. But all I did basically was drag my black pencil over the green areas and uh, I just created something that kind of looks like a bunch of trees. I'm going to use this lighter color, this light peach color for the for the beach area here but I'm gonna make this more of a rocky area I'm gonna be adding some brown and some black to create some uh, some rocks in this area and I'm gonna to try to put some indications of rough shapes that kind of look like rocks using this uh, brown colored pencil, uh, brown pastel pencil. But at the same time, I'm keeping in mind that the light source is coming from above, so I'm going to be putting some shadow under each and every one of those shapes that I created by uh, just scribbling the pencil about because uh, sometimes I don't really know what exact shapes I'm going to come up with. Sometimes I just wiggle the pencil around a little bit and try to see if I'm going to come up with some interesting shapes. And here I produced some rock-like shapes and I have some larger rocks in front of these rocks. And once I clean that up a little bit and add a few more highlights here and there, I'm going to be ready to move on to the sea or the ocean, whatever it is. I'm just adding a few more darker areas around some of these leaves, uh, just so that some of these lighter details would stand out a little bit more. And for these objects in the background, I dab them a little bit with a brush, maybe to soften the texture a bit. Um, so that the amount of detail and texture wouldn't really compete with the stuff in the foreground. And I'm going to use a turquoise color here for my base color of the sea. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover this whole area first with some turquoise and then I'm going to be adding some other maybe slightly darker bluish tones to it. Now there's a lot of residue here by the way the the, the pastel pencil I used here was a master touch pastel pencil because I didn't have that particular color in my Kohinoor range but it doesn't really matter I think these are a little bit harder but um, you know whichever brand you're using it's fine just as long as you can get the colors you want 
So here I want the, the water to be a little bit darker near the horizon and to be getting near uh, a, little bit, a little bit lighter near this middle area and to be getting more greenish and turquoise um, around this middle area here. Now you want to make sure that your water level is actually level and straight. Uh, I tried to straighten it out a little bit by using a white pastel pencil because I want that part of the sky near the horizon to be the lightest, almost white, because uh, the clouds are kind of uh, looming over the horizon there. And now I use that darker blue to put some indications of uh, waves to show the movement of the water. I'm also going to be adding some foam and some splashing, splashing water with, uh, uh, with a white pastel. But now I want to draw this sandy part of the beach. I want a warmer color, that's why I picked this pale orange color and I'm gonna go over it with some yellowish color to see if I can get something that um, looks a little bit more like a warm color of sand. So I, I kind of like this warm color. I think I'm gonna stick with that. And now I just have uh, now I just have to add a little bit more detail to the water. I'm not going to draw this super detailed. I have a slightly more dra uh, detailed drawings of waves and uh, water, but here uh, we're just going to make some indications of waves. I'm putting some shadow under these waves which are coming up on the shore, and I'm going to make this part of the of the beach a little bit darker because it, it it's kind of wet here and it's kind of reflecting the sky a bit so I'm going to make it look like that uh, that part of the water has uh, is wet but the new the new uh, group of waves is coming on and is about to cover it again uh, so I made this area first a little bit darker so that some of the uh, foamy parts would show up a little bit better. I tried working over that with a pastel pencil first but I realized that I wasn't really getting those light highlights that I wanted to achieve so I used a soft pastel to get some even whiter whites and I just wiggled my hand a little bit to create some foamy effects so I want some foamy waves which are coming onto the shore here and some splashing water here in the left corner just creating some indications of waves maybe here in, in the distance as well just a little bit of variation in the water adding that indication of foam and that should probably do it as far as the water is concerned a little bit more shadow here and maybe a few more of these uh, touches of a white soft pastel and I think this already looks like some waves washing out, uh, washing out on the shore I'm also going to add some shadows here in the right side of the beach. I want to make it look like uh, some of the trees on the beach are casting a shadow onto the sand here. Not necessarily these two trees, maybe some other trees. It's all good. I just want to have some shadows here just to make this sandy area a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to draw a shadow or a slightly smaller palm tree here and I'm going to blend that a little bit to avoid having too much texture in the shadow. I want to simplify it a little bit. And I'm going to add another shadow here in front of this one. Simplify that a little bit too. Blend that in with a uh, with a tutelion. And then add some variation in that sand. Maybe some lighter colors and some darker colors just to make it look like that surface is a little bit uneven like 
there is some variation in color and detail in there as well. So I'm putting down some of the finishing touches, trying to refine some of these waves, adding a bit more white to them, and um, adding a few more touches to the beach. Now, eventually I decided to add a bit more land on the horizon on the left side as well. I don't know why I did that, but maybe for the sake of balance, so I'm going to add some more trees in the distance and maybe even a few rocks under them but you can't really see those uh, because of the the angle of viewing so it's mostly going to be some trees in the distance like maybe there's another island or, a, or another group of trees there in the background I'm just going to try to make this a little bit better and refine this shadow a bit. The drawing is now done. I'm gonna put my signature in the lower right corner. So I hope you like this little scene. I think it shouldn't be difficult even for beginners with pastel. Um, if you want to see longer videos you can check out my Patreon. I have lots of landscapes also on my YouTube channel here, so don't forget to check those out. Also, don't forget to subscribe and give me a like and comment. I hope that you found this useful or entertaining. And I'm going to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.